This is worksheet 2.6. I'm going to be checking whether or not given ordered pairs are solutions to an inequality. So the 0 is an x and the negative 1 is a y. We substitute that in to the inequality or the equation to see if it's actually true. It's not actually an equation because there's not an equal sign there. So 0 goes in place of x, negative 1 goes in place of y, and then we simplify. And so you can really just punch this uh, part right here into your calculator. Okay, so then when you do that, you get 3 on the left. That simplifies just to 3. So then we ask ourselves, is 3 less than or equal to 2? It's not. So no, it's not a solution. Not a solution. Let's try that with uh, the next one. So 3 is an x and 2 is a y. So substitute that in. So 3 went in place of my x minus 3 times y. But instead of putting down y, I'm going to put down 2. Is that less than or equal to 2? I think you get 6 minus 6, which is 0. So I believe your calculator would say 0. Then you ask yourself, is 0 less than or equal to 2? Yes. So then, yes, this is a solution. Okay, it is a solution. By the way, there's tons of solutions, infinitely many solutions to these. Ooh, in a little bit we should make you list them all pictorially. That'll be fun. It's funny because it's actually what you have to do next, but it's not as painful as it sounds. So that's what you're doing. I don't know if there's anything else tricky coming up here, and I'm a little nervous about getting this all done in time because I have a time limit on my YouTube uh, videos via QuickTime, which I use to make these. So uh, that's what you do. Use your calculator. See if it, if it works out. Hypothetically here, I don't even know this, but if you were to get a 5 on the left side, and then you see you're wondering if 5 is less than 5, that's not true, right? 5 is not less than 5. 5 is equal to 5. So then if there were, there's not here, but if there were an equal sign underneath it, then this left side has to be less than or equal to the right side. And in this case, it is equal, so then it would be a yes. I guess that's the main tricky thing that can come up there. Let's talk about giving all of the values that are where x is greater than or equal to 1. Boy, if we had to list those, that would take forever, literally, because you can't, you know, just spend the rest of your life increasing numbers. So here's the deal. Um, we want to first graph the line where x equals 1. I'm thinking to myself, graph the line x equals 1. Now it's a vertical line. This line that I'm making right now is where all of the x's are equal to 1. Now, because this line has an equal, uh, equal sign underneath the greater than, it's greater than or equal to. I'm going to make the line that I just made, I'm going to keep it solid. Now I need to know which side of the line to shade. So you can do a test point. You could test 0, 0. And now there's nowhere to plug in 0 for y, but there is a place to plug in this is my test point at 0, 0. There is a place to plug in 0 for x, which is right there. Now is 0 greater than or equal to 1? No, that's false. So this is not true. This is like a no over here. This point is a no, and so is every point over here. So if this side is no, that means the other side is yes. So what I've just graphed is where x is greater than or equal to 1, which if you take any coordinate pair over here and you write down the coordinates anywhere, you would find that x is greater than 1. Up here, way over there. But instead of listing them all, and this is where it's funny, we just shade it, and that tells us and we know that this is like this keeps going out and forever that way. So that's that. Number five. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Number five. If you wanted to write this in slope intercept form, you could. The slope is zero. So there's like zero x. That's why there are no x's over there. So your y intercept is negative five. That's down there. And then it's greater than or equal to. So it's going to be a solid line. So this is a horizontal line, and it's a horizontal solid line right there. Now we just need to figure out where to shade. So we're going to do a test point. Awesome. Yep, sounds good. Thanks for your help. So the test point, I'm going to do 0, 0. 
You can do any point as long as it's not on the line. So let's see, I'm, I like to do a picture of where I'm testing. I'm testing right there. I'm going to plug 0 in for y, and there is no x, so I don't have to worry about substituting 0 in for x. Is this true? Is 0 greater than or equal to negative 5? Yes, careful, right? Because I'd rather owe someone nothing than owe someone 5 bucks. It's better to just have like no money than to be in debt. So uh, this is true. So I'm going to now shade towards the point towards the TP, the test point. Whereas over here, it was false, so we shade it away on the other side of the line from the test point. So I'm shading towards it. Awesome. Now, like number six, uh, this is in slope intercept form, so the y-intercept is negative one, and the slope is two. So I can start graphing that line. However, I'm realizing that there's no, it's, it's uh, y is less than, it's not y is less than or equal to, so in that case, we are going to have a dashed line. So instead of connecting these points with a solid line, I am going to dash it. It means that any point on the line, if you were to check, a, if you were to plug a coordinate pair in or check it as a solution, if that point is on the line, it's not going to actually make this true. It'll kind of go back to that five is less than five example I referred to on number two. So I already know it's shaded or dashed. Excuse me dashed line. Now I gotta do a test point to shade it. So I'm gonna test point zero zero because the line does not go through zero zero and zeros are easy to work with. So zero goes in for y and zero goes in for x. And when I simplify the right side I just get negative one. So is zero less than or equal to negative one? That is false. And so I was shading, I was testing, excuse me, this blue point right here. And since that's false, I don't want anything to do with that blue point or anything on its side. So I'm going to shade on the other side of the line from the test point. So right there. Things that might make this a little more challenging. Number seven isn't in slope intercept form. It's, I guess it's in standard form, technically. Um, number seven, I would get y by itself. So it's in slope intercept form. So I'd multiply each side by three. So then I get y is greater than or equal to negative 6. y is greater than or equal to negative 6, because I times by 3, multiplied by 3. So then, this is going to be a solid line. And it's at y equals negative 6. So that's a horizontal line at negative 6. So then I have to do a test point. And really, folks, I, you know, this says y needs to be greater than or equal to negative 6. y is like your height. It means the height needs to be more than, than negative 6. It needs to be above. But if you did do a test point, if you test pointed the, the value 0, 0 and plugged in 0 for y, that's true. So you're going to shade towards the point from the line. Now number eight in uh, standard form, I see a lot of students getting this into slope intercept form and that's cool, so I'm gonna do that. But realize you could see that, oh, two times four is eight, so that means that your x-intercept is gonna be four, and then negative four times negative two is also equal to eight. So if I were graphing the equation, two x minus four y equals eight, those are my intercepts. But I'll solve this thing for y for you. So I get negative 4y equals, do not combine these. These are not like terms, but I would recommend that you write the x term first. So it's negative 2x, and that's a positive 8, so plus 8. We haven't gotten y by itself yet. We need to divide by what? We need to divide by a negative 4. Everything gets divided by negative 4. So we get y equals, i got to write it down here, y equals 1 half x. I simplified that fraction minus 2. I simplified this fraction. And plus negative 2 is the same thing. So if I were to graph this, check this out. My y-intercept is negative 2, and then I go up 1, right 2. Up 1, right 2. Boom. If I would have just connected those red dots right away, I'd still have the same line. Now this is going to be a dashed line. Bump, 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 bump. So I'm dashing. 
And now we need to do the old test point. Test point. So if I test is 0, 0, that is right here. So, uh, boy, using it in standard form is pretty sweet. Like you can actually go back and do the original one, even if you graph the line out of, out of slope intercept form, because 2 times 0 is 0, minus 4 times 0 is 0. I get 0 is greater than 8. That is not true, so it's false. I'm going to shade away. Hello. Uh, no. Uh, no, he would eat lunch in here. Uh, he's not in his room, though, huh? No. Must be making copies or something. I don't know. Sorry. Okay. So I shaded away from the test point, and there we are. Um, got some standard forms here. I'm not going to be able to finish up this video with the time I have, so maybe I'll do the rest in a second video. But this will be a good.